Good afternoon. The last module or the last discussion we had on the video was about being grateful. Attachment, flow, and how that affected hypermobility. Today we're going to get serious. I want to talk to you about the breath. There are lots of things you can do without in your life, but the breath is not one of them. And if you haven't learned to use your breath, come see me. I cannot tell you how many people come to yoga and I say, okay, breathe. And they look at me like I'm going nuts. And they breathe like they're in the labor ward. It's really important that you breathe correctly. If you don't breathe correctly, I mean, one of the things you're going to notice is that there's not that much oxygen going around your body and your brain isn't able to function as well as it should. The story that I tell about this, I heard on Radio National, could have been about a year ago, about this lady who was, um, she was in the American Marines or Navy or something like that and posted to Afghanistan and she was uh, a medico and she also uh, drove a chopper and she was caught in a crossfire the, the helicopter came down she broke a leg and ribs and goodness knows what she was in really bad shape um, she was they were attacked by the uh, rebel forces all the guys were killed and she was kept alive she was thrown into the back of a truck and driven for two hours on bumpy roads with a broken leg and I think she probably had a broken arm as well and, and whatever it was she was severely injured I remember the broken leg uh, with the bone poking through while she was in the truck, she was raped a number of times. So, you know, there was lots going on in her life that she could have been less than grateful for. And she said one of the things she realized while she was in the back of the truck was that no matter what they did to her, they could not take away her mind. pretty good. Breathing helped her survive and she realized they couldn't take away her mind. They could do lots of things to her body and at a certain point it became meaningless what they did. It was just a body. But she could still keep a, a good mind. She could still be kind. She could still be gentle. She could still forgive no matter what. And you know that's the choice that you make. And another woman who also a Radio National interview, this would have been further back than that probably, uh, she was Charged, she and her boyfriend were charged with a, a murder that they did not commit and they were sentenced to lifetime imprisonment. Uh, she was seven years in a, a maximum security prison. In that time her boyfriend died, we're not told how. And she spent two of the next years in solitary confinement in Texas. Now solitary confinement in Texas, that's what it is. You're just in a small room. Uh, she said she could put her hand out like that and touch the walls. There was a toilet. There was a very narrow bed. Everything was painted cream. There wasn't any other colors. The highlight of uh, the end of the first year was that she received a salad with beetroot on it. And the color just blew her away. It was just so amazingly beautiful. And she made the juice into paint and she saved her hair and she painted with it. Um, and she had done yoga before she went to jail. 
and eventually she was released and pardoned because it was a wrong commitment. And when asked what kept her sane and healthy, she said, yoga breathing. She said, there wasn't really much room and I wasn't well enough to do yoga, but I learned the value of the breath. I learned the value of pranayama. And I think that's extraordinary, those two women realizing that their bodies were just bodies and the most important thing was to nourish the mind in the worst, the worst circumstances. Now you had good circumstances, what are you doing to nourish your mind? Are you meditating? How about you try meditating for three minutes a day? This is step one, three minutes a day. You can sit cross-legged or you can sit in a chair. And in the beginning, that three minutes, you want to run away. You want to go shopping at Coles. You know, anything, anything rather than sit. And the discipline is to sit for three minutes. Same time, same place every day. Sit for three minutes. And after you've gotten over the shock of that, you can start just concentrating on the breath. When you're breathing in, know you're breathing in, and when you're breathing out, know you're breathing out. And when your mind drifts off, bring it back to the breath. Sounds easy. If you want more on that, get back to me. Email me. I'd love to help you with signs of the breath, starting off with three minutes. You've got 24 hours in the day. How about you donate three minutes to yourself? When you learn breathing, you can also effectively strengthen your core. If you don't know how to breathe, there is no way you can strengthen your core any more than if a weightlifter doesn't know how to breathe, he won't be able to compete weightlifting. The core is fundamental and breathing is fundamental to the core. In teaching people who are hypermobile, it's fundamental because their hips and their pelvic area and their body is all over the place and they need to bring back to the center. Therefore, they need to breathe. Breathing, proper yoga breathing is really important and they need to understand how to strengthen the core. And it's not about being fancy, even, even doing the plank properly, breathing in, breathing out, using the core. Um, my son still has the record for the plank. Uh, he was in the plank for 21 minutes and uh, nobody yet has been able to do that. So the breath is useful in meditation. You can't really meditate if you can't breathe. Uh, if you don't breathe properly, then yoga flow is a little bit, um, you'd be wishful thinking. And if you don't breathe properly, you're, you're constantly in the fight and flight mechanism. So concentration isn't really the best. So breathing, and you know, what I'm talking here on this video, I'm, I'm spending 15 minutes for, for something I want you to spend a lot of time investigating. So wrong breathing can cause anxiety and palpitations, give you sore head, sore neck. And if you're hypermobile, wrong breathing just because there's so many associated symptoms, wrong breathing is exaggerating all those symptoms. And it's making you feel not so good about yourself. Because frankly, if you're breathing wrongly, your body isn't functioning as it should. It sounds simple, doesn't it? But 
start with three minutes a day just thinking about breathing. Just sitting down on a cushion or a chair at let's say half past six for three minutes. How hard is that? It's not hard at all. Twenty four hours in a day and I'm saying let's do three minutes. So this is what I want to these these really basic things are what I want to talk to you about on these videos. And hypermobility is hugely important. I am seriously considering uh, making most of my yoga classes into remedial yoga classes and specializing with students with hypermobility because I think it's a growing problem and so many people come into my classes with that and expect to do yoga, flashy yoga straight away. It's not helpful. I want them to understand their bodies before they move into uh, Hatha yoga or Ashtanga or anything like that. And so I'm working with people who are suffering and who know they are suffering but don't know how to get out of it. So yes, I think in the new year this is going to be my project. So on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Saturdays there will be lots of restorative going on at my place or remedial I like to think of it as because restorative can be anything. Remedial, something with a hope of making changes is what I want to do with you. Namaste. Have a lovely afternoon. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. Come see my garden. Namaste.